Hello guys, this is Panzer Mercy 36 and today we are going to be doing a uh, kind of like a tutorial demonstration on oil washes. I had that uh, recommended to me by some people, so yeah, and I, I actually learned how to do it too. So yeah, and it's a really helpful thing to know because washes make your models look really nicey and acrylics are really crappy for washes because they dry really fast. Uh, here you can see I've got uh, burnt umber, which is the only brown that I have because oil paints are expensive. This is like six or seven bucks. I thought you think this is a uh, th this would be about six bucks, but depending on the pigments inside, this is series one. Sometimes you get series two, which is like twelve dollars. Here's some thinner. Any thinner works really. This is just is a brand I can get here in Canada. I don't know what else, but as long as it's you know oil thinner, it works. I've also got these things here, which are a little like a cups. I don't know if you get them anywhere else, but if you get like a medicine thing, you know, this will be one of these on the top just so you can measure it. I've got some of these running out, but yeah, they're really handy for washes and stuff like that. They're disposable and uh, any type of thinner will not destroy it, even lacquers. Yeah, so, uh, and I'm going to be doing it on the BT-7 as you can see here, which is nice and brown. So a dark brown oil wash should show up well in it. Alrighty, so first I'm going to show you what you can do with oils. Here's my 50. I've done a little bit more work on it. As you can see, if I can get the camera down far enough. Mostly what was done with the oils. As you can see, probably along here, there's like a wash. I'll zoom you in more. You can see there's a wash, obviously. like Kind of like fake shadows is what it creates along here. Right around there, and along the sides of this wire for the uh, headlight thing there, and then also, as you can see, on the top of the turret here, along that uh, side of the armor plate there, this thing here, and in the weld seam beside it, you can obviously see that there's a uh, oil wash on that, and also on things that are, you know, cast in texture. Well, look at the cupola, maybe you can see it on that. I don't know, I think the camera's going to focus on that. And then also what I've used it for is some streaking effects. I'm going to show you how to do this, but if you look on here, you can see the streaks. Uh, this one here, and a couple of them, also the wash that kind of streaks down there. These are AK Interactive uh, rust thingies here, but yeah, these streaks, and also up top here you can see the streak right there. That was done with oil paints as well as right here, and there, and there's another one over here off camera. Yeah, and they're really nice to work with. I also use them for chipping, as you might be able to see on certain parts of the vehicle. Kind of along there. Yeah, so oils are a very versatile uh, medium, and I would highly, highly recommend them. They're not hard to use, but they're expensive, so don't waste them. So let's get into doing the oil wash, and also show you, like, other streaking and things like that. So the first step to making an oil wash is to obviously you know, thin the paint down to that, so that it's a wash consistency. Now, if you look up stuff online, it'll be like, oh, a wash is 13% paint to whatever percent thinner, or 5% paint to 95% thinner, or 20 or whatever. Basically, there's no, like, 100% thing. You just mix it up, and then you test it, and then if it's too thin, then you add more paint. If it's too thick, then you add more thinner. It's kind of a trial and error method. Because I don't generally like have like a measuring cup and I'm like painting here and stuff like that. I just kind of guess it. These things do have a uh, thing on the side though, so like 30 milliliters or whatever fluid ounces, grams, the drams. What's a dram? All right. So, so here's the thinner. I'm just gonna put in a bit because I'm not gonna need a lot of wash. So probably like 10 milliliters. But you know, I don't really care. It's exact. Also a technique if you want to pour your paint or whatever without it going everywhere. So you can actually put it here, then take this thing, you know, you can see it, and just like go like that and then pour it, and then it will go down it so it won't, you know, go down the end of the uh, of the bottle and then like pour all over the ground. Yeah. That's what I do with my thinner because it smells really nasty. The, uh, the acrylic thinner. So yeah, now we have approximately 10 milliliters of thinner. Now I've got my paint here. 
I'm just gonna like take some of it. I don't really know exactly how much I'm gonna need. I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and kind of like scoop some out of here. I don't know if most people will pour it out, but I'm not gonna be using a lot. And then you mix it up, you know. It's obviously going to be too thin right now. So we'll add some more. And then once again, I'm going to mix it up. If you mix with the uh, paintbrush, you know, the bristle end of the paintbrush, you can make the bristles all like nasty and not together. So that's why I'm doing this. And it's probably still a little bit too thin, but we'll try it anyways. Depends. If you want like a dark wash, then you can change the the consistency. So this right here is just a piece of a breech, I think, from the inside of a T34. And I'll put some on. That's not mixed very well. It's not bad, but as you can see, it kind of... I don't think you can see, but I'll just put it a little bit there. Yeah, it's still not mixed perfectly well, but yeah. As you can see along the outside, it kind of went down the side, so maybe a little bit more paint, and it should be good. Usually I'd be testing this on the model, but I'm just testing it here because I feel like it. So same amount I just put on. I'm going to put that in again and mix it up. You can also buy like washes in a jar, but this is more versatile because you can choose what color you want. There's a brown wash. Usually you use like a black wash, you know, for shadows, but on something like a yellow panzer, you don't want black, you want brown. Because black just looks too dark. Alrighty, so let's try that uh, on this piece here. So as you can see, it's still a little bit thin, but I think I'll go with that for now, and it might I might add some more paint uh, to it after. So on these, um, I'm pretty sure they're fuel tanks. On the side of the, of the uh, BT-7, you can see I've tested the wash. I put in about twice the amount of paint I already had in there into my mixture. Make sure you keep mixing it, though, because eventually it'll kind of settle, and you get really thin stuff at the top, and then when you get to the bottom, it'll be like this thick kind of crap. So make sure you keep mixing it. And I put in more paint than usual into the, uh, you know, into the uh, jar of wash. <laughs> because this vehicle is pretty much this color, but a little bit lighter so than this way. Um, it'll show up better. So you just take some, you know, on your brush, and then you kind of go like this. And then it goes down the seam. The excess there, you can leave it there if you want. Or you can actually just like uh, wipe that off later with some of the thinner on a different brush. But you just kind of on these areas, I'm just going to put it over the whole thing. But in certain areas, you only want to go along the seam. So yeah, let's go somewhere. Let's go over here to the back. And over right here on this fire extinguisher. So the paint is starting to dry. Uh, it'll be like a couple of hours before it does so. And even then it won't be completely dry. You can still like wipe it off with your fingers or something like that. But as you can see I've just been kind of like going crazy. I have really thick streaks at the back. Up here I've just been like slathering it on. Especially on the top of these exhaust things there because those will be pretty nasty. Um, yeah, I still might work a bit on those. It's kind of drying funny but you can see down the sides of the hull there with the rivets and stuff like that. It is coming out pretty nicely. It's accentuated the details. You can see on the front here. 
those rivets there and the front plate. It's really bringing it out. Now a key thing to remember uh, when putting your wash on the wheels is that um, if you put the model like this and put the wash on, it'll all collect at the bottom and it won't look really good. So you want to put your model like this and then put the washes on so that it kind of, you know, stays straight, I guess. I don't know, you know what I mean though. And once again, I'm just loading it on. And you want to do it one side at a time because if I were to do this side and then switch the other side and then put the wash on that side and then leave it that way instead of the wash collecting in the recesses on this side or the side that's facing down when the other side is drying whatever um, it would collect at the top so it should be like an anti-highlight you know so only do one side at a time As you can see right now, the wash is kind of half dry on the turret, and you see that big nasty line there, where the, you know, the paint, and that's, well, I guess the thinner meets the not thinner, yeah. Don't do anything about that, just leave it. It'll disappear when the thinner evaporates, leaving the paint in the recesses. Alright, so it's been precisely 24 hours since I put the oil wash on, and since you saw me put the oil wash on, uh, I kind of did a kind of you know redid some areas where it wasn't like super perfect just taking some thinner on the brush and just kind of working it around sometimes kind of like the paint wasn't mixed properly with the wash and then the paint kind of made a nasty shape or something so I just take some thinner and just kind of rub it around it then when it's in the shape I want then I'm fine with it and I also uh, did a the same thing with this AK wash which kind of the same thing just a little bit thicker and darker and then that went in certain places where it's a lot darker, like kind of around there, the fuel tank area. And then uh, also I kind of used it, as well as the oils on the turret, and you can kind of see I got a streaking effect along there. I think on the back, I don't even check the back yet. Yeah, it's not bad. And then on the other side there, a bit of streaking, you know, and then I kind of made some streaks to the edge of the, uh, around the piece there. And you can see the washes accentuated the details, kind of like the turret, uh, not the, t the bolts and rivets on the back of the uh, turret there. And as well as, um, let's go with these at the back, that's a good example. Those two things, they're kind of, you know, they're, they're all, they kind of stand out because of the wash. Just barely, it's a very, you know, light method, but it's nice. Uh, yes, and I'm going to show you how to do, like, streaking and chipping with the oils. Well, with the oil, because I'm only going to use that one color. So, first step is to take the oil paint, and then probably pour it out somewhere, just like a bit. I'll just kind of put it on the table. Watch, I'll break off the piece of styrene. I'll just go with this piece of tiring. And I'll just put out some paint, you know. Check that, and then make sure you have your thinner nearby because that's too thick out of the jar. <laughs> also, if you have a lot of oil paint in your hands, it's really hard to wash off because water doesn't really, you know, react with it. Let me like thin it because it's oils and oil and water don't mix very well. <laughs> so where are we gonna put a streak? You can see there's more kind of streaks along the hull there. Actually, maybe you can't see it. I'll turn the light on. 
But yeah, that's kind of the effect I achieved. It's pretty crappy down there. Not super good, but there's going to be dust effects all over the vehicle, so it doesn't really matter. So for a streaky thing, I'll just go right here on the turret underneath this pistol port right there. If I go out of shot, I'm sorry, but I have to be able to see what I'm doing too. So first step, take some paint on your brush, and then you put it here just a bit. Okay, that's step one. Then step two is take some of the thinner. Let's go right here. I'm just using thinner straight out of the wash that I was using before because it's kind of settled down so it's just thinner at the top. And then just wet the brush, but don't like drench the brush so that when you put it on this big water drop appears. You just want it to be, you know, the bristles to be damp. Then you just kind of work it down. That dark stuff is just thinner, so don't worry about that. <laughs> you work kind of together from both sides. Oh, sorry, I'm off shot. I, yeah. You kind of work together from one side, then you work back this way, and eventually you get this kind of streak coming down the hole. With the turret, you know. As you can see, it's kind of, you know, formed a bit of a streak. No, I don't want a massive one because this vehicle isn't going to be, like, you know, rusty and stuff. But you can see it in there, the, the render of the, the uh, hatch thingy. Pistol port, yeah. And then um, a good effect to do it is do some pale streaks down it, like all over it, kind of like what you see I've already achieved. And then make a couple of the darker ones, kind of from the top running down or from details. And if you also want, you can make kind of like scratches or dings where they're and then put a little bit of rust there. And then make streaks come out of those like halfway down the hole, like rust has been washed down the vehicle. I'll just put dark streaks everywhere, all the way in the straight line. Like, we well, want them to be straight line, but you want them to be like varied in thickness, darkness, and kind of where they're coming from, the height of them, the length of them. Yeah, so I'll just do this all over the turret and I'll just show you what I'm done. Now for some chipping. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the oil paint and just kind of stipple it on, but not much of it. Kind of like how you do it, like a highlight, but stippling. You now people say like, oh, use uh, the sponge chipping or all the hairspray stuff, but yeah, you could use the sponge for this, but I tried it and it went really wrong on the E50, so that's why I repainted over most of it. Um, yeah, that's why I use a paintbrush, but it, I did not even do with a paintbrush and it looked fine, so... That's I'll do it here, but you know, this is my way. If you have your own way, that's perfectly fine. Just lightly kind of along the edges of this hatch. Because that would open and close and bang around a lot, so I suppose since this vehicle is essentially the same color as the you know, the chips that I'm putting on right now. I could go a little more crazy with it and it wouldn't look wrong. Uh, let's put some on the edge of the turret here. I'm just going to work that around. It's also a good idea to put them near where the streaks are. As you can see the streaks are kind of trying slightly. On that side I put a couple of them. Also, if you want to make a bigger streak, instead of just putting a dot, you can actually drag the dot down and then do the working towards it, you know, with the, with the thinner on the brush. Just always remember that if you go wrong with it, you can just take it off with the thinner. I could put a bit too much on there, so I'm just going to scrape it off. I'll put a bit of just chips, kind of scuffs and stuff on that on the back of the tour. People walk. Maybe build the hatch. And then maybe on the front here.
it's showing up in the camera much better than it is here because it's kind of a different color because it's wet paint but you can see where I did it in the, in the middle of that hatch yeah and I'm going to do that on the turret on the uh, the hull as well in areas where the crew would walk and also along edges alrighty guys so here's the vehicle after I finish the chipping I'm just going to go over what I did and then that'll be it um, first of all you can see there's chipping kind of along the edges of these plates here like there you can see along that and then over all the edges there and over there as well as a bit on the edges here and I got a streak going there a fainter one over there yeah and also I put chipping along the edge of the uh, you know the fenders there just because when like rocks and stuff get kicked up and it hits things that get chipped I put chipping along the um, fuel tanks here along the edges of them so just a bit as well as the edge there and a couple pieces along here got heavier put some over there as well I'm gonna still probably do a bit of chipping on the road wheels but maybe not because the road wheels are completely hidden on the diagram I'm gonna put it on um, and then I also put some chipping on the turret like places like here it shows up a lot darker because it's in the light um, but like a streak going there get okay, there and then it's chipping all over the place you can see it especially around this hatch because the edge will get banged against this as well which is also chipped along the edge and more chipping also I did this entire thing with uh, oh, I also just kinda dry brushed it looks dirty now um, that's more of the wash there a bit of chipping along this toolbox and then I got a bit of streaking going with the oils at the back too uh, not much though faint chipping almost along the edge of that uh, yeah, but overall, yeah, the chipping was basically just where the crew would walk generally, so kind of on the top of the turret there, along the edges, then down across there, or down across here, or up there, you know, over there, but mostly along the edges of, of those paths they'd take. Yeah, but overall, I'm really happy with it. I really recommend everybody tries oils. Because you can do basically what you can do with acrylics and enamels and everything else. You can also paint figures with them. I've seen people doing that. I have no, no, I have no idea how to do that because whenever I mix oil, it doesn't kind of cover very well. But I guess it's all layering and stuff. But it'll be really easy to blend them. Uh, it's really loud outside, but yeah. Uh, I'm still gonna do some stuff on this vehicle. Like first, paint the inside of the headlights and put the headlights on. Do do the chain there. Do the uh, rust on the exhaust. Um, what else? The mud, obviously, the tracks, you know, stuff like that, so it'll be done, but just this is all just oils and then a bit of, um, aka interactive stuff, but that was basically the same thing as oils, darker. So, yeah, hopefully this inspires you to try oils, because they're amazing. They're expensive, but they're amazing, so yeah, I really recommend it. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, goodbye.